Okay, thanks very much, Joe. Hopefully you can all see my um, slides at this point. Um, so my topic for this morning is uh, recent changes to the CSER process and the new GMC quality assurance process for curricula and assessments. So these are two quite uh, substantial topics. And so I think that um, I think that this morning for me is much more about signposting uh, that these are going on rather than getting into much detail. But I'm sure that they'll both be very important topics for all of us uh, in the years to come. So uh, to begin with the um, QA process for curricula and assessment systems. So the headline news is that there is a move uh, from the GMC to introduce uh, a proactive approach in which regular review of curricula is mandatory. And that's a change from the old style arrangement where um, colleges were allowed to decide for themselves when they'd review and change a, a curriculum. So just to flesh out some of the details there, um, I, I'm not sure how much you know about curriculum approval already, but all of our specialties had new curricula approved in 2021 to align with the GMC's excellence by design standards and requirements. And so when a college drafts a curriculum, the, uh, the college submits that to the GMC medical education team. And the GMC med ed team then um, sends that curriculum to its curriculum advisory group, which comprises consultants, trainees, and lay people. And, and those lay people include education experts and, and assessment experts. And they look at the curricula, think about whether they meet the standards and requirements, give advice to the GMC medical education team, who then provide an approval decision that usually includes some, some required adjustments. And then ultimately the curriculum is implemented. So historically, the process has stopped there and it's been left very much for colleges to decide if and when they wanted to re-engage with the GMC to make a change. And if we wanted to make a change, we could then make a submission to have a change approved. And, um, and for that, we each college had a slot. So each college had a submission window for making changes. And, and these are a bit like landing slots at Heathrow. If you miss your slot, that's unfortunate. You've got to wait in the queue until you can get another slot. And then go back through the process. So it's quite, um, it was quite a um, laborious process and quite a um, restrictive process in terms of time. So the change to the proactive QA uh, is something that the, the GMC is introducing for two main reasons. First of all, because it better aligns with other QA processes that they oversee. And they also wish to ensure that uh, the QA process encourages improvements. And so the GMC, as you might know already, oversees a QA process for undergraduates in medical schools and uh, the postgraduate delivery of education in deaneries. And other regulated professions have their own QA processes. And uh, the GMC undertook some research about a decade ago to establish what those other QA processes looked like and how they could be applied to the medical profession. And the consistent theme of most of these processes is some kind of self-assessment undertaken by the provider, uh, and then reporting of that self-assessment with an external validation process undertaken by the regulator. And so that, that's the principle that the GMC will adopt. And the purpose of the QA process is to ensure that there's an accountability framework and that uh, and the colleges are seen to be accountable to give reassurance to the public and also, as I mentioned, to kind of leverage the opportunity to enhance and improve curricula by recurrently and continuously reconsidering whether they're doing what, what they need to do. So how will this operate for our postgraduate curricula? Well, it will operate on a cyclical model and the cycle will be of no more than four years duration. So each college or, or faculty will complete a self-assessment questionnaire for each curriculum that it oversees. And that will need to be submitted at least every four years or more frequently if, if we choose to. So the SAQs are not a simple, straightforward document that somebody could sit in a room over the course of a day and fill in once every four years. Uh, the idea is that these SAQs reflect a continuous process, albeit that the, the description is only provided to the GMC at a single point in each cycle. 
but we'll have to be constantly doing things in the background to make sure that we are able to address uh, the requirements of the SAQs. And so the SAQs then will be uh, submitted to the GMC and they'll review them uh, and a decision will be given to continue or, or, or make changes if, if that's considered necessary. And quite importantly, uh, and consistent with the other quality assurance processes that the GMC operate, the college's SAQs will be published. So they'll be publicly viewable uh, because there's going to be an emphasis on transparency so that everyone knows what everyone else, all colleges know what other colleges are doing and the public will, will be able to see what we're doing about, about maintaining the quality of uh, postgraduate medical training. So you might think, well, what questions are going to be addressed in these self-assessment questionnaires? And the short answer is that they'll cover the themes in the Excellence by Design document. And so Excellence by Design is, the, is this um, standards and requirements document that the GMC produced about five years ago that set out the, um, the concept of focusing on high level learning outcomes in medical curricula that, that have left us making the changes that we made for the 2021 curriculum that we are all now applying. And these include things like what developments impacting patient needs are addressed by your curriculum. So in other words, if the NHS changes, if patient needs change, are our curricula still fit for purpose or do they need to change as well? We need to think about the ways that we engage with the statutory education bodies. We need to think about whether we are monitoring our assessments and exams and whether there's an opportunity to improve these. And we need to think increasingly about the impact uh, of our curricula on progression of, of different groups of doctors, such as those with protected characteristics. So going back to the uh, diagram then, how will the new QA process impact this? Well, the, the main area that will be impacted is this yellow bit on the right-hand side. Uh, rather than colleges deciding if and when we want to re-engage with the GMC to make curriculum changes, we will be required to make this return of the self-assessment questionnaire at least every four years. And although previously we engaged when we wanted to make a change, uh, we'll be following this process whether we think a change is required or not. We at least need to demonstrate that we're reviewing our curricula and thinking about whether a change is needed. The restrictive submission window is gone. We're assured that it'll be much more flexible um, for us to make our submission if we want to return an SAQ sooner than within our, our four year window. And um, the GMC have also uh, removed the bit whereby they involve the curriculum advisory group. And so these are steps which, which they tell us will make the process more streamlined and more responsive to the need for changes to our curricula. So the GMC is piloting this new QA process and uh, we are participating at the RC path in the pilot. Chemical pathology is the pilot specialty for us and uh, that's been chosen because it's a small specialty. The GMC have chosen a range of colleges with a range of different specialties of different sizes and, uh, and Chempath is going to represent a small specialty in the pilot. So I think it'll be really interesting for us to test out how this works so that we can learn from that before we, um, before we start the process with our other curricula. Okay, so that was, a, that was a quick walk through the new GMC QA process. Um, and now I'm going to move on to Caesar. So CSER, as you uh, may know, is the process that enables specialist registration for doctors who are not on a CCT pathway within a UK training program. It's about providing a certificate of eligibility for specialty training. Mm -hmm. So this process has recently been redesigned and renamed as the portfolio pathway to specialist registration. And that's been supported by a change in legislation, which comes into effect at the end of this month. <laughs> And the headline piece of information there is, um, is that it will lead to a move from applicants needing to demonstrate that they have followed an equivalent training to the CCT curriculum towards instead demonstrating that they've achieved the high level outcomes of the curriculum through their knowledge, skills and experience. And this change is really intended to map to the change in postgraduate curricula, whereby the focus is much more on outcomes rather than process although there are clearly still a lot of processes which are embedded in, in our CCT curriculum. 
So what does this mean for doctors who want to use this route to specialist registration? Well, they'll no longer need to demonstrate that they followed all of the steps that trainees in a UK programme have had to follow to complete training. They will ultimately still need to show that they've acquired the capabilities that are needed for a trainee who completes training. In other words, they'll need to show that they've met all of the requirements of the high level outcomes in our curricula. And the approach that will be taken is for applicants to submit evidence of their knowledge, skills and experience and, and demonstrate that these indicate that they've achieved all of the high level outcomes that, that we framed as SIPs in our curriculum. So I think the consequences of this is there will be no absolute requirement for time spent on any particular professional activity or learning uh, encounter to be mandatory for, for doctors applying through the portfolio pathway. And I think that links to one of the questions that came up earlier during Bernie's talk uh, about whether CSER applicants will in the future need to complete two weeks uh, of training in paediatric pathology or neuropathology. That's very much a learning process in our CCT curriculum. It's not an outcome. So time spent in a certain place is not something that's going to be required for uh, portfolio pathway applicants. So how is the college involved with the process of specialist registration outside of the CCT curricula? Well, all colleges draft specially specific guidance for the curricula that, that they oversee. Uh, and for us at RC Path, that means uh, that we provide guidance for seven curricula, four cellular pathology specialties, chemical pathology, medical microbiology, and medical virology. And these are documents that are intended to summarize what evidence is required or indeed recommended or preferred uh, for each specialty. These documents are agreed with the GMC. We're not at liberty to put whatever we want in them, but all of these uh, specialty specific guidance documents have been recently revised to take account of changes to the process that, that focus on high level curriculum outcomes. You may or may not know that when the GMC receive an application for, uh, from a CSER applicant um, and a due course from a portfolio pathway applicant, they send the applications to the Royal Colleges to seek their advice on whether the, the applicant meets the required standard. And so for the new process, applicants will be asked to map all of their evidence to the SIPs from our curricula and provide a narrative to explain why they think that their knowledge, skills and experience demonstrate that they've met each one. So really importantly, thinking about the quality of this process, um, I think it's good to note that our college fellows evaluate applications that are received by our college from the GMC. So whenever an application comes in from the GMC, the training team complete an initial high level review and summarize the application. That application is then sent out for review by uh, college assessors who, who comment on the areas that appear to be satisfactorily met and identify areas where there is not sufficient evidence um, of the applicant having met what was required. And then the um, process continues with the co-chair of the credentials panel for the relevant specialty, undertaking a further review of the application and of the assessor's uh, opinions, and then provides a, a final recommendation that, that the college then passes on to the GMC about the suitability of the applicant for specialist registration. So in summary, um, the QA process for curricula is coming soon to uh, a curriculum near you. We are undertaking a pilot in chemical pathology first, but I think next year this is likely to be rolled out to our other curricula. And the college specialty training committees are going to have a key role in undertaking the regular self-assessment review and completing the self-assessment questionnaire that we've got to return on a four yearly cycle. And so the QA process will challenge us because we'll be um, We'll be obliged to engage with considering and reviewing our curricula, but it presents an opportunity to look at the strengths and weaknesses of the 2021 curricula. We all know things that have gone well and things that have not gone well, so it should be an instrument for improving and resolving problems. And the headline in CSER is that it's becoming a portfolio pathway to specialist registration, and this will bring some more flexibility for applicants than before. But it is important to note that the overall expected standard, the overall expected capability from applicants is not being reduced.
The evaluation process for CSER applicants and its robustness certainly relies on, on college fellows and, and those of our fellows who undertake these assessments and have done for a long time do a really important job in ensuring, ensuring the robustness of, um, of CSER recommendations. And what I'd say to you at this point is, please have a think about this and ask yourself, could you help with reviewing applicants who are, who are looking for specialist registration via the new portfolio pathway? So I think my 15 minutes is up and I'll leave it there. Thank you.